parasitology can be divided broadly into two. What are they? Protozoa, another one is helminths. In helminths, again, we have cestode, nematode, trematode, and protozoa separate. So now we'll talk about protozoa. It's one of the, uh, parasitology is one of very interesting topic, and also it's very important from medicine point of view and pediatrics point of view. A lot of diseases which are going to study in medicine, it's from parasitology only, okay? So let's start, not waste the time. So protozoa first. When you talk about protozoa generally, the two important things you will always notice in protozoa stages. What are the two stages? Either it is trophozoites, other one is cyst, cyst and trophozoite, okay? Common one. Now, the first one is entamoeba histolytica. Entamoeba histolytica means if you know, that is the one which causes amoebic dysentery. So now, what is the infective form? Entamoeba histolytica, you would hear commonly, you know, most of us had this amoebic dysentery. You know, you can't refuse it. Most of us in our life, at least once we would have had this, okay? Either entamoeba histolytica or it's giardia. We usually have it, okay? So now let's talk about this. The infective form. The infective form of uh, entamoeba histolytica is what? Usually the cyst, the cyst. What do you call it? You call it as quadrinucleate cyst. Quadrinucleate, quadrinucleate cyst. Okay, a cyst is like, you know, it can be a uh, uh, uninucleate by a uh, unisingle nucleus, this one, the, uh, the picture I'm showing here. It can be just only one nucleus, two nucleus, three or four, usually four. The quadrinucleate is one is the uh, uh, infective form. Okay, remember, quadrinucleate cyst is the infective form. Root is, you know, what is the root? Usually, of course, all these infections are fecal oral root, right? Fecal oral root contaminated water or food causes what it causes you call it as amoebic dysentery amoebic dysentery right you have bacteria dysentery also amoebic dysentery anyway dysentery means it's a bloody diarrhea and we have bacteria bacteria dysentery is usually shigella you know that shigella is the most common cause of bacillary dysentery or bacteria dysentery okay followed of course e h e uh, and uh, if you e coli uh, e coli Enterohemorrhagic type is there. Okay, right. Now, see, so this causes amoebic dysentery, bloody diarrhea. The lesions usually, what type of ulcer? The ulcer question is frequently asked. What type of ulcer you see here? See this picture. How does it look like? It looks like a flask, right? It's an inverted flask shaped ulcer. That was a question, Pato question. Flask shaped ulcer. So if you say flask shaped ulcer, do we have any other ulcers? Any other type of ulcers? Yes, we have. What ulcer? We have transverse ulcer transverse ulcer and we have longitudinal ulcers longitudinal ulcer which are the diseases transfer ulcer t for tuberculosis right and longitudinal ulcer we studied it typhoid fever salmonella typhi typhoid fever right so please remember and plastic ulcer is for this thing everything is a question here again i'm marking everything so classic ulcer so usually it affects the uh, intestine and causes dysentery but there's extra intestinal site also which is the most common extra intestinal site that's a question what are you saying? If it, if you say it's a liver, you're right. Liver is the right answer. It the 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 amoebiosis can affect your liver and also followed by liver is your lung and then it can go to your brain also. It can affect any part. Okay, so all these things are common. So if it's affecting the liver, what does it first looks like? That's a question frequently. What does this? Uh, can you see this picture and answer me? What does this picture looks like? The picture here. What does it look like? This picture. What is this one? Can you see me? It looks like an anchovy sauce, anchovy, delicious anchovy sauce, anchovy sauce. So you will not have confusion here. Why? Because uh, amoebic cups is A for A. Okay, A for A. So anchovy sauce. Anchovy sauce appearance like pus in the amoeba, in the liver, when it affects the liver. Okay, that's important question. Now, when you do a stool wet mount, you check for a trophocyte or cyst. Okay, either is possible, but ideally trophocyte is, if you find a trophocyte, that is the pathognomic. Okay, cyst, they can be, you know, oh, it's been a while that they, the diarrhea stopped or whatever you can't say confirmatively. But trophocyte, if you see, trophocyte or cyst doesn't matter. Both are right. But trophocyte means like very confirmatory. Okay. Trophocyte cyst is the stool wet mount. So which is the diagnostic? Which is the main diagnostic? You see trophocyte diagnostic. So how you see the trophocyte? You see this is the trophocyte you're seeing here. Okay. Tummy boy form. What are you seeing here? RBCs. When you see RBCs, when you see RBC, your red blood cell inside the cytoplasm of uh, trophocyte in a stool wet mount, that is catastic. Trophocyte with RBC, that is also called erythrophagocytosis, is the catastic feature diagnostic for your amoebiosis. Okay, very simple. Treatment, you know, treatment is metronidazole. Treatment is metronidazole. So metronidazole, there's one good shortcut. I'll, the treatment is metronidazole. Metronidazole usually for anaerobes, 
Ethereum or most of the anaerobes we give metronidazole and also for this particular uh, protozoa. The shortcut is get out of metro train. Okay, just remember a metro train. A metro train is coming, right? You a metro train is just coming. Okay, this is a metro train. Let's say it's coming. So if you're standing here, what you will say? You'll tell them to get out of the way. You're right. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. So G stands for Giardia. E for Entamoeba Histolytica. E for Entamoeba Histolytica. Okay. This one. There are two Gs actually. If you remember, one is Giardia and other one is Gardnerella vaginal. That is your bacterial vaginosis. Also, we give metronidazole. And your EH, Entamoeba Histolytica, which we talked now. And T for trichomonas vaginalis. Okay, you're going to study in a while. That's also protozoa. So remember, okay, Giardia, these are all our protozoas. Giardia, Entomestratica, and trichomonas vaginalis, and Gardnerella is a bacteria, bacterial vaginosis causing uh, bacteria. So that is also, you give metronidazole. Okay, and anaerobes, of course, anaerobes. Okay, right. Now, next topic. So we have, we have done with it. These are the main questions they'll ask you in the uh, Entomeba histolytica. Now, our next topic is Giardia lamblia. Giardia lamblia, one thing you know, always I, I repeat again and again, Gia kya karta hai? The motility is important. Gia, Gia, Gia is the vegetable. Gir jata hai. Gia falls down. Gia falls down. Falls down. Mene kyu aise bola? Uska motility hai falling, uh, falling leaf motility. Falling leaf motility. Okay? Falling leaf motility. Uske liya, I'm just stressing it here. It's a falling leaf. Gia gir jata hai. Giardia gir jata hai. Giardia falling leaf motility. Because you're going to confuse the trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonas vaginalis also looks like Giardia. But uska for, uh, motility kya bolti? T for twitching. Trichomonas twitching. Right? So Gia, don't forget. Gia is important question. Frequent asked question. That's what I'm stressing it in advance. Again, infective form is same. You are quadrinucleate. Same like antimistolica. It's a quadrinucleate cyst. Question. You'll have a question here. And root is again fico oral root. Fico oral root. Fico oral root. Again, contaminated water. And comparing to, uh, if you compare uh, endometrial and giardia, giardia is more common, very commonly isolated than amoebiosis. Okay. So, giardia, what it causes? Here, the diarrhea is totally different. Amoebia causes amoebic dysentery, but giardia causes what type of diarrhea? It causes foul smelling. It causes very foul smelling. Foul smelling, sort of mucus diarrhea. Foul smelling mucus diarrhea. Okay. It is very, uh, you can say, oily type. You know, it's very oily type. Okay. You can say even fat. You can you can say it's a fat, fatty, foul smelling diarrhea type. Okay. And then usually what it causes, so it causes fat malabsorption. So fat malabsorption, those are now what you call steatoria. Steatoria. Okay. Steatoria. Steatoria. Okay. Steatoria. 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 Okay. Remember, that's important question. Steatoria, most common cause of steatoria is your Giardia. That's question asked frequently. Okay, steatoria is basically fat in the stool. So anything with fat, 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 it's giardia. Okay, remember that. Okay. Gia gia kanami kya hota? Fatty diarrhea hota. Remember like that. Gia is a vegetable. No, it's a vegetable. So gia kanami kya hota? Apko fatty diarrhea hota. Remember like that. Okay. Right. Now wet mouth. So uh, now what with diagnosis? Diagnosis again same. Trophozoite. Trophozoite here it's totally unique here. You see the shape. Uh, if you see this, what does it look like? This one, this one, okay, this is, it looks two, you can say two different, either by the, this, you can say the shape. It can be either called as what? Tennis racket. Tennis racket. Other, otherwise, it's also called tear shape. Tear shape, okay, tear shape, tear shape, that's it. Uh, tennis racket or tear shape, both are right answers, okay. And if you remember tennis racket also seen in which clostridium? Can I get an answer? You remember? Which is difficult match? Different, difficult tennis match. Clostridium difficile. Clostridium difficile. Difficile. Okay. This is because of pseudomembranous qualities. You remember antibiotic due to excess antibiotics. It's important question frequently asked. Okay. Pseudomembranous quality due to excess antibiotics. You get that. And the, that Clostridium difficile has what? It has difficult tennis match. So tennis racket appearance is usually seen in Clostridium difficile. Okay. The spores. So you're talking about the spores of Clostridium difficile. Okay. So one more. You got it here. Okay. Now next one. That's for trophozoite. What about the motility? Just now I told. So it has what? Gia girjata hai. Gia girjata. So falling leaf. Never ever forget in your life. Falling leaf. Falling leaf motility. Okay. Gia girjata. Gia falls down. Okay. Cyst is oval shaped. Quadrinucleate. You see this is the cyst. It's usually like this. Okay. This is oval shaped. Oval shaped. So it's like this oval shaped with an axostyle in the center. And 
four nucleus like this, okay, an axostat. So it's a quadrinucleate cyst with an axostat. So that's the thing. If they, you can have a picture, that's what I'm stressing. Jaria picture also you can have, commonly asked. This can be asked, examiner's favorite. So usually they will ask this question also. They, they give the shape and they tell, identify what is this. You see all these things, exostyles and everything with the nucleus, two nucleus. Okay, right? That's all. Now next we have a test called entro test. Entro test is also called as what it's a gelatin capsule test. It's called a gelatin capsule test. Gelatin capsule. Gelatin capsule string test. We call it a string test. String test is sufficient to know, but yeah, entro test gelatin. So basically, what happens is in this test, what you do, you just take this gelatin capsule, this is a gelatin capsule, right? You hold it, you put it inside the you uh, patients uh pass it into the patient's stomach and intestine, leave it till there. So you leave it like this through the string. So it goes inside and stick it here and leave it for a few hours. So what happened? That gelatin gel it attracts all the protozoas or parasites there. It won't stick to gelatin. Then you remove it and you do a wet mount or do a culture and you'll identify this thing. Okay, that's basically a string test. So don't confuse with the string test you see in cholera. Okay, you have a string test in cholera. If you remember, I told you there's in, in vibrio cholera, in vibrio cholera, also we do a string. That's different string test. That is from the bile. You just try to pick it up. You see a string. That's a different story. Here the other string. This is an entro test which you do for parasite. Short cut is GCS. GCS is yeah, Glasgow coma score. Usually when someone goes for coma, you remember. So how to remember you did someone someone what they did? They put a string on this is this is the someone what someone some patient they put a string and they try to die and then they went what they went into coma so when they went to coma what you did you did the gcs score so what is this have a g for gr this test this gentro test a string test is done for giardium other one is your cryptosporidium cryptosporidium and other s for strongyloides Strongyloid is strongyloid is an easy shortcut. Please remember GCS score. Kisi ka string da kisi ne string se mara ke liye koshish kiya tha. Uska coma ho gaya. Coma ka wajah se went to emergency. Emergency mein they did GCS score, Glasgow coma score. So G for GRD, C for cryptosporidium, S for strongyloid is finished. Dosra echo string that is for your cholera, vibrio cholera. Okay, that's totally another type of string test. Okay, right. Now that's done. So we were done with the GRD. Now, now we are going to some. Other protozoas, which we also call acid first parasite. Acid first protozoa also, they, they, these all are intestinal. Now, what are we talking? They all are intestinal protozoas, intestinal parasites. Okay, in the protozoa. So, cryptosporidium, cyclospora, isospora, these three are popular. Why these three are popular? They have some common features. What is that? They usually cause diarrhea in immunocompromised patients. Immuno. Compromised, immunocompromised, immunocompromised patients. Okay, immunocompromised patients. That means most common cause of diarrhea in HIV patient, if they ask, it is usually cryptosporidium. 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 Okay, don't forget. It's a cryptosporidium. Don't forget. Cryptosporidium is most common, followed by cyclosporidium. Okay, so this is that's what it's very important. This question is important because frequently asked, this question will be asked frequently. Okay, HIV patients. So again, uh, uh, before that, these are why why it's important. These three are acid fast parasites. I'll talk about it. You know, acid first parasite means usually acid first bacteria you must have here. That's your mycobacterium tuberculosis, leprae, nocardia, all those things. With that, there are there are some other things, um, uh, acid first. What are they? The parasites, three parasites. Cryptocycloid, so you must know. And of course, tenia sargenera segments also is there. That will talk in the hooklets and some of the things comes under acid first. But this is important. You should know this. Okay. Yes. Now. Uh, so what do you do? So uh, the infective stage is again cyst. It's a cyst is the infective stage again. Okay, that's fine. And what do you do? You do a modified acid. That's what I told you. It's an acid first. Modified acid first. Ma uh, that's otherwise called quinones test. Modified is the test to identify this. Very easy to identify. So the smallest one. See the small. See this. Uh, the smallest one. This is a crypto. This is the cryptosporidium. Okay. This you might have in a picture like this in from a stool sample. When you in HIV patient stool sample and they give this acid first touch, it's crypto small. It's a thoda bada hogato, that is cyclo. Usually you don't expect a cyclospora uh, in exam, but yeah, just remember, it's a little bit bigger than that. The biggest one would be your isospora. Isospora, you see the structure. If you see two, this is like a you know, cyst, this is a cyst, you know, like this. Like this, see, like this sort of like oval. And if you see two center, you know, cyst like this, if you see, that is isospora. Bigger than all the three. Okay. So remember, isospora, cryptosporidium, you can have in the exam. That's what I'm stressing this. And acid first. Because if it acid first, pink color. Like this, you can see pink color. So if you see pink color structure like this and it's coming, you, that is a uh, uh, crypto cyclo -iso 
right? Okay, that's it. Now we are going to free living amoeba. Free living amoeba, fresh water or water living amoeba, free living amoeba. You can say, okay. So that is the first one is Negleria fowleria. We got Negleria fowleria. What's Negleria? See, in Negleria fowleria, one thing I want you to remember, please don't forget, Negi has a girlfriend called Pammy. That's the question they ask. Pammy. Negi ka girlfriend ka kone? Pami, 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 Pamila, Pami, whatever you want, you remember. Why? There's a shortcut for this. Why? Because uh, in these two, you'll always have confusion. They both are causing lesions in your brain, but it's got nam different, different. Okay, the, for negligent followers, girlfriend, Pami. Why I said Pami? Because it causes what? P4, P4. Okay, what is uh, uh, what does it cause? It, uh, it causes the primary, primary amoebic. Amoebic meningo encephalitis. M E N H meningo encephalitis. Okay, meningo encephalitis. You got it? That's what PAMI. PAMI, PAMI stands for palm, palm, PAMI lipo. Okay. PAMI, pa, this question was repeated many times. That's why I'm stressing this. Okay. So this one. So you see what are you seeing here? This touch, this touch, the amoeboid, such a free living. This is a uh, negative folio. Less chance, but if they guess in CSF fluid, this was found. This amoeba was found. If something with CSF it strikes, you just think only it's either negative folio or um, your uh, Akanta amoeba. Okay. But negative folio is mandatory, especially if they give the term as like primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. Okay. Very fatal and usually history of swimming in the freshwater. Swimming freshwater, I get to it's Negi. Negi, while swimming with his girlfriend, Pami, he got this disease. Okay. Remember like that. Negleria fowleria. Right. Now, next one. Uh, so in CSF, you see what this the trophocyte which I showed. This mobile, this trophocyte. This is the this is the motile trophocytes which you are seeing in the CSF. That's it. Okay. So this is for your Negleria fowleria. That's it. This much only. Not too much to stress. Okay. This is very easy. The history of you know, swimming pool water, and if they give a history of lesion in the brain, and that's it. You have to think PAMI. PAMI is primary amoebic meningo encephalitis. Okay, Negel, Nigel's girlfriend. But I can't tell you because it confused me because I can't tell you I can't. Icon, hai, icon or icon, whoever you want, is a gay. Gay, G A E. G. It's a gay. You pronounce it gay. Gay. Okay, it's a gay. So, what happened? Icon ko kya problem hai? He used a contact lens. Contact lens. After history made contact lens agya to, contact lens agya to, you will think about akantamioba. Parasite me akantamioba. Bacteria me it is. Who wears ekta kapur pseudomonas arginosa? Contact lens related anything comes there, it's ekta kapur. Either contact lens be kuchh related parasite me if they ask it is akantamioba. Icon is a gay. Gay mani kyu bola G A E because I'll tell you now. It's a granulomatous amoebic encephalitis. Either I'm going to write it now. I may what it causes so because of contact lens wearing you get what keratitis. Severe pain. The pain will be very very severe. Something it looks like this. Uh, if the, you will have so much severe pain compared to symptoms, the pain will be more. When the pain is more, it is keratitis. I can't discuss back on the mystery. So the product, the trophozoite looks like this. Okay, it looks like this. Okay, so now what is the problem? So eye is fine, but what about the brain? Through the blood, from the eyes, the brain can go to eye. That's what I said. Econ is a gay. Gay matlab kya hai? What is the meaning? Gay is nothing but granulomatous. Granulomatous. Amoebic. Encephalitis. See the difference. Pami and uh, uh, this gay are totally different. That's what I don't confuse. Negleri akadamika disease now you should know. So I'm repeating again. Negal, ne uh, Negal, Negleri, Negal ka girlfriend Pami. But Akon Akantamiba is a gay, gay, gay. Okay, please remember. So you'll never forget. Okay. Granulomatous amoebic encephalitis. That's it. Okay. This is done. Now, next. Uh, so this is also a question. Frequently asked question, you will get it. I know free living amoeba. In free living amoeba, uh, so apart from Negleria and Akant amoeba, Balamuthi also is there. Causes encephalitis. All all these three can cause encephalitis. If they can ask you which of the following amoeba can cause encephalitis, please yet you know okay answer. Uh, Negleria, Akant amoeba, Balamuthi. Nagel, Akon, Balu. Nagel, Akant, Balu. Bus. Okay, Balu or Bala, whatever. Right. Now next is trichomonas vaginalis. So these are free living. The free living amoeba basically cause encephalitis. Now one more thing, trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonas is totally different. It affects what genital female uh, vagina. It affects vagina and it causes what? It causes vaginitis. One of the causes for the vaginitis. Okay. So uh, so vaginitis may usually trichomonas is one thing. They don't have a cyst stage. This can be asked. 
which of the following doesn't have a cyst stage? Your uh, trichomonas vaginalis is six. There is no cyst stage. Instead, what they have, they have only trophozoid stage. They have only trophozoid. They have only tropho trophozoid. They have only trophozoid stage. Okay, sexually transmitted. See, when you talk about the vaginal discharge, vaginal discharge, three things you, will, uh, you have to remember. One is candida. Other one is bacterial vaginosis. And other one is trichomonas vaginalis. You know all the things. Candida may just the which discharge? You know, curdy or cheesy discharge. Curdy or cheesy discharge. Cheesy discharge. Okay, discharge. Bacterial vaginosis may, it is Thin, profuse, thin, profuse, thin, profuse, fishy discharge. Fishy. Okay. Bacterial vaginosis, candidiasis. And TV may, we are going to talk. What type of discharge it is? It is very frothy. It's very frothy discharge. Frothy, scanty, you can say. Frothy, scanty. But frothy is the right word. Frothy, scanty discharge is characteristic for your, um, this one, in your trichomonas vaginalis. So what does it look like? You got, which one? Again, I'm repeating. You seeing as a strawberry, exactly. Strawberries frequently asked again. Strawberry vagina, you know, I'm not going to ask the other strawberries because we repeated many times. Strawberry tongue is for scarlet fever, strawberry lips for Kawasaki, and a strawberry nose is for rhinosporidiosis. Okay, now strawberry vagina cervix comes, it is your trichomonas vaginalis. And one more thing, what if you remember the motility T for twitching? T for twitching. Trichomonas will twitch. It's me koi confusion ana nahi chahiye. Okay. So remember, see, it almost looks like a giardia, but only problem it has single nucleus. See, there's only single nucleus. Plus, a giardia to intestine mein, trichomonas vaginis vagina. Vagina mein, if they give this picture and they say this uh, lady has this discharge and she has this uh, type of uh, in wet mount, if you see this type of trophozoid, then it is trichomonas vaginis. You can close your eyes and like, and treatment metroindosal. Get out of. Metro means metro arahe. Get out of the way. G-E-T. T is for trichomonas vaginalis. Okay. Right. Got it? So we are done with this. We are done with our uh, protozoa. Protozoa may be finished problems. Now, these are protozoas affecting intestine, your vagina, brain, your soul. Now, there are some other protozoas which are called hemoplagellates. Hemoplagellates means they affect what? They affect the hemoplagellates means they affect what? They blend. They are, these are the flagellates that present the blood. So there are uh, hemoplagellates. There are in the infective forms are either uh, either it's a promastigote or trypanomastigote. If it is, if it is promastigote, it is lishmania. For lishmania, the infective form is promastigote. Okay, lishmania is the one with I think colors are on. We're going to talk. And trypanosoma, trypanosoma, we have trypanosoma bruzi and cruzi. That one is trypanomastigote, tripomastigote, tripomastigote, tt, tt. Okay, okay. Now let's go to first. This is lishmania dona vani. Lishmania dona vani means it's a few. You know the disease is what kala azar. It's important in India especially Bihar and UP, this disease is very, very common. So, questions frequently asked. So, let's start. So, what is the disease? It is the Kala Azar. Kala Azar. And the Lishmaniasis, uh, the, uh, so that's what you can call it as uh, Kala Azar, Lishmaniasis. So, other name for this is called Black Fever. Black Fever, not the Black Death. What is the Black Death? What is the Black Death is called? If you remember, Black Death is seen in Plague. Black Death is different. Okay, don't confuse. Black Death is Plague. Yersinia pestis. That's a different story. Weissenstein, uh, stalactite growth, the broth. Okay, that's for Yersinia pestis. But now we are talking about the uh, in parasite Kalazar or Lishmaniasis means it is your uh, Lishmania dona one. Lishmania and don't confuse with dona vanosis. Dona vanosis is a sexually transmitted disease that causes what granuloma inguinale, where we see dona one body. That's a different story. That is called bubo. Don't confuse. Here, this is a Lishmania Donavani. This causes simply Kala Azar. Otherwise, the, uh, the visceral Lishmaniasis. Yeah, I forgot to tell. Kala Azar or also we call it as visceral Lishmaniasis. Okay, they're same because you have cutane Lishmanias. So don't forget. Visceral Lishmaniasis. So this is the picture. Typical picture you can see here. This boy. See here? He has a hepatos, pleno, megali. Okay. Uh, sort of joint is, you can say, hyperpigmentation here and there. And he uh, usually they have pancytopenian hyperpigmentation with fever, of course. Okay. So fever, hepatos, pleno, megali, hyperpigmentation, pancytopenia, hemoglobin. This picture comes and if they give place Bihar or UP, this uh, Uttaragand, somewhere like this places comes in North India, especially North India, then you have to think about Kalaza. Okay. Got it? Then, what is the infective stage? Just we spoke. The infective stage is what? It is the pro-mastigote. Because we have two important things. We have infective stage and diagnostic. Pro-mastigote mastigote is the infective stage. 
Okay, promastigol. But if you're amastigol, that is the diagnostic. We're going to come there now. Okay, so in infective stages, promastigol. Don't confuse. Okay, and now is the vector. What is this vector you're seeing here? What is this vector? This is sand fly. Okay, the vector is sand fly. This is also question asked, sand fly. Otherwise called what? Plebotomus. Plebotomus. Okay, Ple sand fly or plebotomus. Another name. This question also asked. This picture. They can give you, you can see. You can see the wings, you know, it's like a sandy, sandy type. Okay, sandy. Okay, so that's a picture. That's a picture. And what happened after, uh, during colors, uh, after color, you you give, you treat the colors and sometimes what happened? Some of the, uh, this Leishmania, they don't die. They remain there. And what happened? They cause an immune reaction. They talk an immune attack. Okay, that is called polar azar, uh, post color azar dermal leishmaniasis this one post color is dermal leishmaniasis see it looks like this it looks like leprosy it's very difficult to identify it's like leprosy but not leprosy so this picture comes and they, if they give the history of the patient was uh, you know treated for <coughs> excuse leishmania donovani kalaza and after treatment few months later a few weeks or months later if you develop this type of lesion then you think about what pole kalaza dermal leishmaniasis okay that's it that's the question okay now next Diagnosis. Diagnosis may see all of the most of the parasite. If you talk about the parasite part, it could be for malaria or trypanosome or whatever. The stain which we're using is usually Jimsa stain. Jimsa stain. But Jimsa stain comes under which stain? Romanovsky. Romanovsky. Okay. G I E M. Jimsa. Yeah. We are going to talk about Romanovsky in a while. There are other strains. Romanovsky also. We have bright stain. We have field stain. We have Lishman stain. We have Justin Singh Bhattacharya stain. We'll talk about it. But please remember, Jimsa is the most common used to stain. So when you use the common stain, what do you do? Because I told you we have um, Hepatosplenomegaly. Uh, so you can take either bone marrow spleen as this also will be asked. In a, in a patient, we took the liver biopsy or an aspirate from spleen or liver is taken. And then this picture was, this picture would be given. They'll try to identify what it is. Okay. This is called LD bodies. This, this, this small, small one. See the structure like this. The structure, which you see like this, like this, two dots, you know, double dot, like this, two dot. They are the AMS to God form. AMS to, it's like a DR. Sometimes they call this DR. Okay. These small, small structures which you're seeing there, no? These are called what? These are the uh, LD bodies, Lishman, Donovan bodies. And they are what? They are amastigot. They are actually amastigot forms. Amastigot form. Promastigot is the infective stage, but amastigot is the one which is inside the macrophage. You can see inside the macrophage. Okay. And it's a double dot appearance. Also, we can say. In culture, in culture, we see what triple N media, triple N media, triple N for Novi, McNeil, and Nicole. Okay, you, triple N, just know triple N. You'll remember triple N for both Lishmania and triple N both triple N media. Triple N media asked many times, so please remember triple N media. Okay, right. Then complement fixation test, you do WKK antigen. Okay, okay, WKK antigen. I, I'll tell you the shortcut out, remember, and also RK39 is frequently asked question, if you remember, RK39 antigen test by card method. If you remember, there is for rubella vaccine also something number comes, RA27 bar 3, something like that. There are RA27 bar 3, multiples of 3. Here RK39, multiples of 3. Okay, 39. Okay. So don't confuse this. 39. It's not 37 or it's not 93 or whatever. It's a 39. That's that's what I want to stress. That's what I'm saying. This question is asked. RK39 test is an antigen card test. Fast for rapid test. Okay. Complement is WKK and Chopra test or Napier's RDA test. They are also other tests. They are used for checking the hypergammoglobulinemia because hypergammoglobulinemia is very characteristic in Kalaza. So to uh, gamma immunoglobulins go high, antibody production goes high. So for to detect that, we do what? Chopra's antimony test or it's a Napier's RDA test. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, that means usually what happens, you add the formalin or urea sublim to check gel or precipitate formation. You just add this thing, formalin and urea, and check for the hypergomonic or not. And one more is a skin test, that is the Montenegro skin test. It's like your lepromine and tuberculin test, type 4 hypersensitive, Montenegro skin test. The Montenegro, you know, negro is a kala. So, so otherwise, how to remember, you know, who all likes kala? Kala, Kala, Kala is a movie, right? It's a Rajinigant, our Rajinigant, South Indian uh, Rajinigant's movie, Rajinigant's movie, right? Movie. Kala, if you remember. Okay. So Kala me, Kala to ekto negro. Negro, because Kala is black. Kala means black. So negro, Montenegro. Montenegro already argue. Montenegro. Number one. Montenegro likes Kala. Number two, our Venki. Our Venki likes Kala. And who? Chopra. Chopra. Mr. Chopra likes Kala. Any Chopra. Vipranka Chopra, Parniti Chopra, who you want? Chopra likes Kala. And one or Ranbir Kapoor also likes Kala. RK. RK 39. 
he's not 39. I hope he's not 39. Ranveer Kapoor or uh, whoever, uh, Ranveer Kapoor or whoever you want, okay? Like Scala. And last one, uh, your uh, Napier. 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 These are the people who like Scala. Remember like that. Who all likes Scala? Mr. Chopra likes Scala. Napier likes Scala. And RK likes Scala. Montenegro likes Scala. It's a bit twisting because you, you might confuse with other terms. There are a lot of terms like this coming. So that's what I want to stress on this. Okay, please remember. Okay. So Montenegro skin just a type 4 hypersensitive reaction. That's it. <coughs> Excuse. Now next. <coughs> Lishmania tropica. In Lishmania tropica, yeah, this causes very interesting disease. Uh, tropica is just the cutaneous. This question was asked many times. It just causes the cutaneous, not mucocutaneous. It just causes cutaneous because we have Lishmania brasiliensis. We have Lishmania brasiliensis that cause mucocutaneous. Mucocutaneous Lishmania. Okay, both are important questions. Please remember, I'm stressing, I'm comparing both. Tropica means tropical skin and a tropical skin. So only skin, cutaneous Lishmaniasis. But Lishmania Brasiliensis, Brasiliens are a little bit, you know, different. So mucocutaneous, they have muco and cutaneous infection, Muc mucus and cutaneous infection. Cutaneous Lishmanias, other name is, we have so many names, Oriental Sore, Oriental Sore. Not Oriental Fever, Oriental Fever comes in Rickettsia Japonicum. That's a different story, Rickettsia Japonicum. That I'm not going to stress here. We will start Oriental Fever. It's caused by Rickettsia Japonicum, Japonicum. That's a different story. We are talking about sore, oriental sore, or we call it as the uh, tropical sore. Tropical sore, oriental sore, or tropical sore, or we call Delhi boil, Delhi boil, or Baghdad boil. Okay, the scutin just it looks like a boil. Okay, it really looks like a boil. So that's what. Okay, oriental sore. Tropical sore, Delhi boil, Baghdad boil. They can give you any name and confuse it. But please remember, this is caused by your Lishmania tropica. Lishmania donovani, Scalas or Vishal Lishmania. So that's also a question. But here, Lishmania tropica will cause oriental sore or tropical sore or Delhi boil or Baghdad boil. That. Okay. So uh, you do a Lishman skin test for diagnosis. Lishmania brasiliensis causes mucocutaneous Lishmaniasis. Okay. For this, the other name is called Espundia. <coughs> espanol you know usually espanol you can say it's more uh, mexican or brazilian so espanol espundia okay remember that this question so when you talk about see that one to rashes me so many rashes so that he made there so many rashes so one more if you remember estiomine estiomine remember estiomine ester ester uh, estia, est, yes yeah estiomine is actually eti etiomine not estiomine i'm sorry etiomine eti you remember Eti story, Eti, what she has? LGV. She gets LGV stow and she makes what? Bubo, bubo, bubo. Uh, uh, your your uh, your donovanosis causes pseudo bubo. But the Eti, etiomine is a LGV, it's a true bubo. Chlamydia, it's caused by chlamydia L1, L2, L3. Okay, bubo. And they have groove sign. Remember, these are the things you should know. This is a STD. Etiomine is basically STD. Now, espundia is basically cutaneous, mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Caused, you know, caused by your Brazilians. Okay, Brazilians. Remember that this will be asked. Okay, and Brazilian purpuric fever. You remember Brazilian purpuric fever? That is caused by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that is the weak scotch. Right? That is your. That is caused by your hemophilus. That's the hemophilus. You remember hemophilus, which is um, uh, the Brazilian purpuric fever. Okay, that's one thing. That's a different thing. That is comes in the your hemophilus. Okay, now here. This one, this espanol espungia is basically caused by Lishmania brasiliensis. Okay. Pink eye. I want to say it's a pink eye. You call it a Brazilian purple fever or pink eye. That is the hemophilus part. It comes in the hemophilus. Okay. Cox, a weak bacilli. Cox, weak bacilli. Okay. Okay. That's uh, the Egypticus. That's caused by hemophilus Egypticus. That one. Cox, weak bacilli, which causes Brazilian purple fever and the, which one you have? Pink eye. Okay. Here, Espundia is Brazil, uh, Lishmania, Brazilians, Mugodinus, Lishmania. Okay, so that's all. So now uh, with Lishmania, we're going to stop. So uh, trypnosoma, malaria, and other toxoplasma would be the other class for the, uh, the um, uh, your protozoa. Okay, thank you so much, guys. I hope it's very useful and definitely important questions are going to come from here. So all the best again. See you soon.